talk about yesterday quickly, if that's all right first. Obviously, first home clean sheet of the season and, and your first clean sheet of the season as well. How much does that mean to you and to the team? Uh, we just spoke about it downstairs, actually. Like, I think it's uh, it's been coming. We've been a little bit stickier defensively than last season. Um, had a few results that personally I've not been too happy with. So to get that on the board in the manner that we did was was fantastic and look we, we made a lot of changes for the game um, so to get that result and that performance I think proved um, the, the actual strength we've got within the squad I mean lads have come into that team with not really playing much football at all but they've come in and they look like they've never missed a game um, and that's testament to what we've been doing day in day out on the training ground. Yeah, you're saying there's lots of changes. You've had to really fight to get that number one shirt as as well. What's that? What's the season been like for you so far? Uh, it was a tough start. Obviously, little niggly injury in pre-season and bringing another goalkeeper in doesn't help you. Um, the way that we play football and the work that we do on the training ground, I, I missed two or three weeks in pre-season, which is a massive amount in terms of what we want to do going into the game. So I always knew it was going to be tough to... Um, kind of get into the starting lineup early in the season, and look, look, Aiden do, has done fantastic when he's been in the um, in the goal on in the games, and he's brought a real good element of competition throughout our goalkeeper unit. Um, just different skill sets for different games, and um, look, I'm going to be working every day on the training ground in the gym and if I'm called upon then hopefully I can give my best. Um, it's not easy when you don't get games and then you're chucked in, which we've discussed previous within the coaching department and things, but um, we try and make sure training is as competitive as possible to kind of negate that feeling. But you do, it, it is difficult and the way that Aidan's reacted to being taken out of the team recently has been fantastic and it gives him a period of um, a period and an opportunity to work on different elements that is going to improve his game and give him time to see how, even more so, how we work as a unit at Knots and um, allow him to have a platform to go forward and do even better for this club. Yeah, and I guess when, when he's starting, you're pushing him all the way and when it's the other way around, I guess he's pushing you all the way now. Yeah, it's a, it is a difficult position. Um uh, like being the goalkeeper that's not playing because you've only got one position you can play so you're waiting for an opportunity to get that and that either comes from suspension, injury or a manager's decision. That, that's the only three things. You, you're not going to get five or ten minutes to prove what you can do because that just doesn't really happen. So it'll be frustrating for him but that's just what we do. We push each other and Monday to Friday we'll be pushing each other to get the best we can and then on Saturday we'll be right behind the other person making sure that you give them every single piece of help that you can to make their performance as easy as possible and you want them to do unbelievable for the team. Well, on do Saturday and obviously Wrexham, the visitors, you played in that dramatic 3-2 back at the race course in, in April. What was what was that day like and what was the season like in general to go to go toe-to-toe -to -toe all the way? Yeah, I think it was a pretty special season, wasn't it? It, it gave a lot of exposure for the National League and um, looked like massive respect to Rex and what they're doing and they've provided exposure of not only now the National League but also uh, League Two over in America just because of their their situation but um, I don't think it would have provided as much exposure if we didn't play our part in that um, and I think the competition that they brought brought the best out of us. Um, and I think <laughs> looking at that game as well, it probably brought the best out of them. And it was a, it was a pretty special season, to be honest. And l like at the end of the day, we both got over the line. Um, they probably did it less dramatically than we did. And look, full credit to them. They they, they were fantastic throughout the whole season. Um, and it, it was a brilliant game. Their atmosphere was fantastic. Obviously not the result that we wanted from it. But it was a very, very close performance from both teams of almost being a perfect game. Have you experienced in your career a, a game that's been hyped up as much as that or even a season that's been hyped up as much as that before? No, not that I've been involved in. Um, 
and that's that's partly due to the lads here that do it from our side um, Nick and Steve are fantastic with the media they do and look we provided them the content but they put it out there and they, they roll the drum as well and obviously the people at Wrexham they're, they're brilliant in what they do as well media wise and kind of the, the content that the team provided so um, look sometimes it's easier to kind of shape that narrative and when you perform the way that both teams did it, it's not really a hard selling point but the way they did it was fantastic does it does it feel like it's a more special or maybe more important game following what happened last year like do you feel like you maybe owe them one after after april uh not necessarily owe them one i think look credit to what they've done they're a very good team so w we give it the kind of the the detail and the importance that it, it warrants as a game within this league what happened last year was special but it's done uh, we can't go back and change it they can't go back and change it we both eventually at the end of the season we both had success and we both got our kind of what we targeted at the start of the season and that was fantastic and we enjoyed that and we did it but now we're a new season and the the harsh realities of what sport is, it doesn't stand still. So we, we can't be thinking back to that. We've just got to be focused on the next game. And look, they've had a very similar start to the season as us. Um, so we know it is going to be a tough game. They always bring quality and um, we're at home on our patch. So hopefully we can imprint our style of football on the game and we can have a successful match. Yeah, well, it's second versus third. It's going to be a full, a full mellow lane again. How much does that make a difference in a in a game like this? Yeah, the the home fans have been fantastic for the last kind of, I'd say the last four years that I was here, but especially the last eighteen months. The they've seen a lot of success, granted. So so it is easier to be a bit happier about it. Um, but yeah, they're they're brilliant, and when they're in full song and full voice, it it really is a great feeling to be playing in front of that and when we're shooting towards towards the the cop end like and they're in full voice that's uh it's almost like a little bit of an extra not motivation but that kind of feeling um you don't really need motivation when you're out on the pitch but it gives you that little bit extra buzz when they're bouncing and we're shooting at them is it, is it any harder would you say particularly as a, as a goalkeeper to play the style of play that the knots do when you see a lot of the ball and maybe take a few calculated risks here and there when there's sort of 12, 13,000 people all, all looking at you? Um, I don't think the crowd really pays effect, but yes, the, like it is tougher playing a goalkeeper role in this team because you're asked a lot more, you're, you're asked a lot more of than what you would be at other clubs. Um, that's just the way we play, that's the way that Luke sees successful football and evidence shows over the last 14 18 months that it is a successful way of doing it so you buy in because me playing that style and Aiden playing that style helps the team and I don't know whether I wouldn't know whether it's statistically correct but I'm pretty sure that between us we'll probably have one of the most involvements in goals scored throughout the English league um, just the way we play um, and that helps us so well, it's, a, it's a lot of work on the training ground it's having an open mind in terms of look what you've done for the last 14 years yeah we like it but we're going to play a lot different to that and if you're not willing to expand your mind to that then you're probably not going to stay here long and if you are you're going to develop your game a whole host I've, I've just got to ask have you, have you watched the documentary? No, I, no I haven't so I don't know what's on there other than someone had messaged me the other day and said it was just a screenshot of me in it and they just said uh, I've just got around to watching the first series like have you seen it you're in it and I was like no nah, I haven't seen anything that is all I've seen <laughs> fair enough <laughs> thank you Sam no worries oh, just a, a couple of quick ones from me if that's okay Sam um, you're talking about the, the sort of change in style that's something you've not really come across before how, how do you find it and is it something that you work a lot on in training using your feet and passing out the back um, I find it exciting Sam if I'm honest I um, grew up 
not really wanting to be a goalkeeper and playing a lot of outfield football, so that helps. Um, I grew up watching a lot of Ajax, a lot of Barcelona, so kind of seeing that if you can incorporate the goalkeeper, it gives you a great platform to be- to build on and almost that extra body. And I kind of for- foresaw a long time ago that the way football will go, that goalkeepers would be expected to be extra players maybe not so much as how much we do at this club right now in my career but yeah I enjoy it like that that's how I like to see football played and that's how I would like to have my team play if I ever became a manager or a coach like that that's what I would want to see um and I think what's even easier is the fact that if you buy into it and you're seeing physical results and evidence there why would you think against it like it is hard work don't get me wrong um and when luke came in the gaffer he made no no secret about it is going to be hard work and we are going to be on the training ground hours we're going to be watching videos we've got etc it, it is tough and it is hard work but the rewards that you get from it are exponential really yeah, absolutely. And um, there's been a lot of talk as well, obviously, sitting second in the league at the moment, but about the jump from last year to, the, to this year in the Football League, how, how have you found it? And obviously, the difference in, in attackers as well that you're facing. Um, I think that there's players in teams in the National League that are very capable and very, like, they'd be good enough to play in, the, in, in League Two. So, you are playing that kind of opposition, just maybe not as often. And then this season, yeah, look, there is like there is teams in there. There's, there's, there's clubs that will pay very good money and have very good players in their team. Um, the first couple of games, we kind of maybe finding our feet and maybe just seeing what the league's about. But I think as, long, uh, as much as the kind of season's progressed and we've got into games, we've realised that, and kind of believe in as well, we play our style of football, the best version of what we can do, we're going to compete at the right end of the league. Um, and look, we're nine, ten, I don't know what games, we're about a quarter of the way through the season now. Um, and we're in a good position, we're in a great position. But if I'm truly honest, I don't think we've fully hit our stride continue, like consistently and for a full 90 minutes yet and that's the dress the dressing room and the staff and the management i think we kind of agree on that and we're all striving for that and look every manager and every team wants to play the perfect game and we probably know that that's maybe going to happen once in your career a perfect game but you want to get as close to perfect as often as you can and and up to now we haven't quite got there yet we we've had spells where we've been exceptional um, but then within the same games we've had a couple of spells where we've been a bit sticky so we're hoping to nullify them kind of spells and the the times in the game where we're not quite exceptional we're still in control and we're still comfortable um, and that's our aim and we're going to keep doing that throughout the season and I feel like we're only ever going to get fitter and we're only ever going to get stronger so um, look, that's that's what we're striving for and that's what we want Brilliant, thank you. Hi, Sam. Hi, Paul. I'm interested in what you said there about the kind of pursuit of perfection and then playing the perfect game. What 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 does the perfect game look like? Well, if we're being honest, perfect game's 100 percent possession and like 100 <laughs> percent goals, like shot success, isn't it? Yeah. But look, yeah. professional football, professional sport is never going to be that. But the perfect mm. game to me is, I'm n- I'm not making a save. I probably yeah. have about five touches in the game, and it's literally mm. look, there you go, Aiden, or there you go, Brins, there you go, Connell. You go play football. We control it. We never have any moments of anxiousness, and it's exciting as well. Like a perfect game to me has to excite the crowd as well as be in control. Um. Mm. 
And like I say, we, we've had spells within games where we've been that. Like, teams are going to have a little attack, but in a perfect game, their little attack is probably them breaking into the final third and being like, oh my God, we got in the final third. And then we take the ball off them and we take them back to theirs again. Um, and you're always in pursuit of that. And I think probably the closest you've ever seen is either a Barcelona team or a Man City team under Pep. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. for a lot of a lot of layman fans out there, they probably don't enjoy it because it's not really exciting ninety percent of the time. Like I would imagine as well, a fan of one team would probably find it more exciting if it was basketball and the other team still had a few chances against you. When actually if you're the player you find it much more exciting if they have no chances against you and you're just popping it around and you have, you, you make three or four clear-cut goals. Maybe one worldy, but you're not really banking on the worldy. Um, so, yeah, you're always chasing that and you're always chasing that kind of, we've worked on this, this and this on Monday to Friday and you step out on Saturday and it all comes out in the game. You do it perfect and it creates mm. the win. Do you know what I mean? Like... It's strange, isn't it? Because the the definition of perfect is it's subjective. It's mm -hmm. my my definition will be different to your definition. Will be different to these guys' definitions. But um, I think what's good here at Knotts is we're within the squad and the management. We're quite aligned in what we think a very good game looks like, mm -hmm. um, and that helps. It's interesting you mentioned Man City and, and Pep because. I wish I had the stat in front of me, but I saw a stat the other day about how in the top five teams of keeping possession this season, there's Man City, you guys, Leicester, and a, a couple of others. So you, you're right up there with Man City in terms of keeping possession and, in theory, dominating games. Yeah, and I think if you probably looked at that as well, Arsenal might be up in there. And you're talking about... Mm. So Leicester's manager worked under Pep. Pep. Mm. Arteta worked under Pep. There seems mm. to be something forming there. For everyone that don't really like the way that he plays, have a look at where the, where the three teams are in the league, or the four teams, including us. Like, it it seems to work, and it's not easy, and it takes a lot of effort and a lot of mental effort day in day out. But look, that that's the way some people want to play. Some people don't want to play that. You you kind of seen. Um, look at the season. Leicester won the Premier League. They definitely didn't play like that, and they won the Premier League. So there are ways that that are going to work and against each other. And you kind of have, um, I think as well. You have this is going to go off on a tangent a bit, but you can only keep that focus and that intensity for a certain amount of time. The way that Pep plays, yeah. eventually, you either have to refresh the staff or you have to refresh the squad. And you're probably looking at about a three or four year cycle. After three or four years, the intensity that he wants to work at, it kind of breaks people. Mm -hmm. So you either take the fact that I'm keeping my players and I'm keeping my staff up one season, we're not going to quite be there, but then the next two or three we are going to be again, or you mm -hmm. go, right, we're going to have to have a little bit of a rotation in players. And you may be seeing that this year from Pep. But that also mm. makes, to that point, what Sir Alex Ferguson did over his period of time at United yeah. shows that that's probably the case. He had a period of time where he had the same players and he rotated assistant manager. So he had Steve McLaren, he had Kieros, he had Mike Phelan. Um, but then he had a period of time where he kind of kept the staff and new players rotated in and out. You kind of lost that kind of Beckham, that kind of era. Skull, uh, York, Cole, she um, Sheringham, Solskjaer, they kind of drifted out and a new breed came through. But then you had a period of time where they kept the players and they just rotated the staff. So it's interesting, that kind of thing. I know that's miles off on a tangent, so I apologise, but... Can I take you back to Wrexham a little bit? I yeah. Mean, I know you say you don't watch the documentary, but what? How do you make? What do you make of the way that they work? You know, with the whole documentary and, and you know Hollywood funding and things like that. How, how do you how do you see that from the outside looking in? Um, I guess you've got to be enviable, enviable a little bit. Um, look, as long as 
and up to now they've shown it, as long as they're in for the best of the club, because me mm. being from Scunthorpe, I've seen people go in at Scunthorpe United with maybe not as much money as these guys, but with money and spend money, and now mm. look where the club is. Mm. I would not want to see that to anyone else. Like it, It's yeah. not good. So a bit pretty enviable because what they're doing, I think, is really good for their brand as a club, um, mm. for their supporters, for their team. And it's proven to be successful. They had an exceptional season last year. They've started the season pretty well this year. Um, so, yeah, as, as long as they're in it for the best of the football club, then, look, credit to them. The way that they're going about it is different to the way that our owners are going about it. But our owners have been fantastic for the club here. Without them... There might not be a club. Do you know what I mean? Like they come in at a really important time for this football club, and the blueprint that they've put down very different to what Wrexham is, but that's been successful nonetheless. Um, maybe took a little bit more time, but then does that mean it's more sustainable? I I, I don't know. Um, but both teams have had success from the way that they've done it, and credit to them. Like that they've shown a lot of. Um, a lot of desire to help the area and help the football club so you, you can't really knock what they've done it's just very different to how other clubs have done it you had such an intense rivalry last season and you, you kind of sense that that's going to be sustained again this time around are you both going to be challenging for promotion by the looks of it i think the way the first quarter of the season's gone it, it, it does kind of look that way um maybe a couple of other clubs involved there too um, Stockport are starting to come strong and they look like they have strength in depth within their squad um, and yeah like it's a rivalry based on success though isn't it it's not a rivalry yeah. based on anything else and I think that's the healthiest one it's almost a drive to get better rather than mm. um, rather than disliking them it's a oh, they're doing really well so we want to do really well and it, it pushes you and takes you to a new level. So um, if we can have a similar season to last year, I say similar because I'd like a little bit different outcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's only good for English football at the levels it's at as well. Like it, it's giving really good exposure to, to the lower leagues and you've kind of seen last year as well with Ipswich in League One and then they've gone on to do what they're doing in League Two uh, in the Championship this year if you can get them a couple of clubs that have the little bit of rivalry but based on because you're both doing well it really promotes what is beautiful about the English game the, the number of clubs in the small space of land compared to other countries is mental and if you try to explain it to anyone anywhere else in the world that just think it's mental when they come here. Um, yeah. But it's beautiful. 